Today is the Sunday in Queen Quagesima, and here's the translation of our readings. Our epistle is taken from the letter of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brethren, if I should speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have charity, I have become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And if I have prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith so as to remove mountains, yet do not have charity, I am nothing. And if I distribute all my goods to feed the poor, and if I deliver my body to be burned, yet do not have charity, it profits me nothing. Charity is patient, is kind. Charity does not envy, is not pretentious, it's not puffed up, it's not ambitious, is not self-seeking, is not provoked. Thinks no evil, does not rejoice over wickedness, but rejoices with truth. Charity bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Charity never fails, whereas prophecies will disappear, and tongues will cease, and knowledge will be destroyed. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is imperfect will have to be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I felt as a child, I thought as a child. Now that I have become a man, I have to put away the things of a child. We see now through a mirror in obscure manner, but then face to face. Now in part, but then <clears throat> I shall know even as I have been known. So there abide faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Let us stand for the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> A continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, Jesus, taking to himself the twelve, said to them, Behold, we are going to Jerusalem, and all things that have been written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man <clears throat> will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and scourged and spit upon, and after they have scourged him, they will put him to death, and the third day he will rise again. And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hidden from them. Neither did they get to know the things that were being said. Now it came to pass, <clears throat> as they drew near to Jericho, that a certain blind man was sitting by the wayside begging. But hearing the crowd passing by, he inquired what this might be. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And they who went in front angrily tried to silence him. But he cried out all the louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. Then Jesus stopped and commanded that he should be brought to him. And when he drew near, Jesus asked him, saying, what wouldest thou have me to do with thee? And the blind man said, Lord, that I may see. And Jesus said to him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. And at once he received his sight and followed God glorifying. And all the people upon seeing it give praise to God. Please be seated. So, Let's begin with a few announcements. The Masses this week are as usual, 6.15 and 6 p.m. Tomorrow, okay, will be the last day of your giving the old pounds for the making of the blessed ashes. On Tuesday, the 13th of February, there will be no 6 p.m. evening Mass. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday already. Even if it's February 14, there will be an extra 11 o'clock low mass this Wednesday. Okay? Every Friday of Lent, starting this Friday, we will have our Stations of the Cross starting 520. 
Okay, 5.20, the smash is at 6 o'clock. Okay, now lastly, for the Chinese among here, Shen Yan Kuai Le. And thank you very much for your attention and your cooperation. and scourge and spit upon and after this scourge on the third day he rise again some affection of his disciples. But instead of giving him sympathy, they were rather obtuse. They were rather indifferent. They understood none of these things. And this saying was hidden from them. Neither did they get to know the things that being said. Meaning, they did not want to hear you do not want to understand the mystery of the cross. Yes, they were spiritually blind. But what about us today? What kind of Jesus Christ are we believing? A Christ without a cross is not the true Christ. And a cross without a Christ is not a saving cross. What Christ are you believing? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the blindest of them all? Now they were about to leave Jericho to go out to Jerusalem, but a blind man begging by the wayside shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. St. Luke did not mention his name, but in a parallel passage, St. Mark identified him. He was Bartimaeus, meaning the son of Timaeus. And fortunately, we don't know what kind of blindness he has. But here in the Philippines, dear friends, we have three common causes of blindness. First, the cataract. And the cataract is often due to lack of vitamin A. And then, when you will be like me, around the age of 40, the proteins in our eyes will start to break down and clump up. And those clumps are called cataract. Second cause is uncorrected refraction. Remember, in our science, physics, refraction is the bending of the light rays towards the posterior of our eyes. And once again, there's three common refractive errors. You might have heard of them. The first is myopia, nearsightedness. The second is hyperopia, farsightedness. 
And the third, astigmatism, the blurring and distorting of objects. However, the third cause of blindness here in the Philippines is diabetic retinopathy. What's that? It's our high blood sugar that damages the blood vessels of our eyes. But now, some of you might object, But Father, this is a Sunday Mass. We want a sermon, not a lecture on ophthalmology. Well, I'm not a doctor myself. But precisely, don't you know that to these physical diseases, we have the analogous spiritual sicknesses. Analogous spiritual sicknesses. Yes, for in our spiritual life, dear friends, our vitamin A is called, children, do you know? It's called prayer. The vitamin A of our spiritual life. Because when we pray, we see the things that matter most, the things that brings us to eternity. That's why he who prays will save his soul, but he who neglects prayer will surely lose it. Now, for middle-aged persons like me and some of you, our cataracts, our spiritual cataracts is called bad habits. Spiritual cataracts. And these bad habits, unfortunately, they are often hard and some impossible to correct. On the other hand, our spiritual erroneous refractions, these erroneous refractions are even more rampant than cataracts. And they are rampant to spiritual persons even here in OLBC, Halakayo Lagot. Spiritual myopia, spiritual nearsightedness, what is that? It is seeking only the temporal blessings of God. It is practicing our religion as if it is an insurance plan. Look, if we are truly the children of God, we must serve Him because He is worthy, not for His rewards. Otherwise, we are only looking for the rewards. We are not His children. We are the hirelings of God. We are not faithful of all this, become faithless. Second, after nearsightedness, farsightedness, spiritual hyperopia. What is that? Spiritual hyperopia is being too anxious of tomorrow, but neglecting the duties of today. Ano kayang mayari bukas? No, what did our Lord say? Sufficient is the day and the evil thereof. Tomorrow is the good, the truth, the beauty that we plan today. Pero pag wala tayong tinatanim, meron ba tayong aanihin? Wala rin. There's no use to be anxious. Spiritual astigmatism is the blurring, the distorting of our spiritual visions. Why? Because of frequent compromise with the spirit of the world. Frequent exposure to the screen. Whether it's internet, computer, TV, cell phone. Yes, our spiritual astigmatism is that we become too attached to the riches, the honors, and the pleasures of this world. We want to have a sweetie, sweetie, kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy religion. And slowly but surely, we reject the cross of Christ. And that, dear friends, is spiritual diabetes. 
We always want the consolation from God, but not the God of all consolations. So let's be honest. Which of these types of spiritual blindness we are suffering? And each one of us is suffering. That's why mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the blindest of them all? Nevertheless, despite all this, no disease, whether physical or spiritual, is impossible for our Lord Jesus Christ. He is both the physician and the medicine of our souls and bodies. But he is not obliged to cure us. We must shout to him, praying earnestly and with perseverance. Yes, just like Bartimaeus here, we must not give up even if others try to silence us or try to mock us. Oh, tingnan nyo sila, oh. Naglalatin-latin daw sila. Of course, charity forbids us to take revenge or hate those who are being nasty or opposite to us, whether they're clergy or faithful. Yes, be kind to animals, children. Our Lord instructed this, remember? Leave them alone. They are blind and leaders of the blind. And if the blind leave the blind, both will fall into the pit. But for this miracle, Jesus commanded Bartimaeus to come to him. And this blind man begged, Lord, that I may see. And then, even without touching him, Jesus cured him simply by saying, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. Consequently, it is by supernatural faith, not just by steps of our bodies, that we approach our Lord. But still, <clears throat> what kind of faith was that? St. Mark, in his parallel passage, noted a very interesting detail. He recorded that Bartimaeus, hearing Jesus, threw his cloak aside, jumped to his feet, and ran to our Lord. Dear friends, we too must get rid even of what is necessary for us to follow our Lord. Look. To take only what is necessary is called the virtue of moderation. No more, no less. Moderation. But to give up even what is necessary, that is the virtue of penance. And that's our program for Lent, to suffer something with Jesus. That includes my new assignment, you know, in Davao. For unless you do penance, says our Lord, you shall all likewise perish. You remember? That was also our lady's last message in Fatima. Penance, penance, penance. Now here, Bartimaeus jump. Similarly, we must not delay our conversion, dear friends. We need to approach our Lord effectively, not just effectively by empty words and promises. Look, if we cannot approach Jesus directly, the head of the mystical body, then let us approach him indirectly in his members. And who are these? The poor, the suffering, and the needy. The poor? the suffering and the needy, the members of Christ. Our faith must operate in charity, otherwise it is but a dead faith. And you know, many people would like to read, would like to comment this 1 Corinthians chapter 13, St. Paul's hymn of charity, our epistle. It's not enough. We must live by it. Our example speaks more than our words. 
We are only convincing if people would see in us what we are preaching. Now, you're most awaited. Don't worry, I will not make you cry. It's not because my last sermon here, I'm going to make you cry. No, you're most awaited. Story time. So, at Eastwood, you know where's Eastwood? Somewhere there. At Eastwood, there was a blind boy who was sitting on the steps of a high building with a hat by his feet. And beside him, there was his sign. And the sign read, I am blind. Please help. But there were only very few coins in his hat. Then there was a man who passed, was passing by. This man took a few coins from his pocket and dropped it into the boy's hat. But then he also took the sign, turned it around, and wrote some words on it. And then he put back the sign for the others to read. And soon the hat of the boy began to fill up with coins. Ooh, bakit kaya? People were giving more money. Now that afternoon, that man came to see how things were going there. But when he was approaching, the boy recognized his footstep and asked, Sir, were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? And the man answered, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said in a different way. I wrote, Today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see. Today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see. Indeed, both signs convey the same meaning. The first sign simply stated the boy was blind, but the second sign told us how lucky we are. We can still see. But you're faithful. Do we really see? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the blindest of them all? Therefore, our Lord's prophecy shows the spiritual blindness of the apostles. Bartimaeus' blindness reminds us of our own spiritual blindness. The cataracts of our neglect of prayer and bad habits. The nearsightedness of seeking only temporal blessings, the farsightedness of anxiety, the astigmatism of worldliness that leads to spiritual diabetic renopathy, the rejection of the cross of Christ. Only looking for what is great, what is successful. No, we need to pass by the cross. That is our success. Truly, Jesus is both our physician and our medicine. But to be cured, we must imitate the penance of Bartimaeus, his faith that operates by charity. Meanwhile, in the rest of this Mass, let us be thankful to God that we can still see that I've seen you here for the past eight years. So our program for Lent is simple. Prayer, penance, and almsgiving. And with this, may Our Lady of Lourdes cure us of all our spiritual blindness. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.